<laughs> All right, man. <laughs> On a very smooth okay. Tuesday evening. How's everyone doing? It's the Teddy Bear, and welcome to Night Tracks Radio. And today's artist spotlight, the co-founder, the OG, the original member of Cameo, formerly, I call it the man, <laughs> the one and only Mr. Tommy Jenkins is joining us this evening as we delve deep into his new album, long overdue, of course, Soul Survivor with a hit single, special one featuring Jesse Johnson of the time. Brother Tommy, how are you doing this evening, man? Teddy Bear, I'm just wonderful, my brother. Good to see you. Man, it's been a long time. Yes, I've been sir. waiting and sitting back, <laughs> waiting, waiting to get some new music from you, man. It's been a long, it's been a long process. What's been going on with you? Oh, quite a few things, man. I, I well, I'm, not only uh, have I been laboring over this album for the last uh, couple of years, but uh, I've I've written a couple of books. Uh, in the meantime, I've uh, become an author and uh, published author, and I'm I'm proud about that as well um been doing some uh my partner and i in la uh we have a company that's about to produce a couple of documentaries uh based on african uh figures uh, black american and and african figures from uh 1600s from the slavery uh period uh some things that people are are going to be surprised that they didn't know about uh, that's our specialty, trying to bring things to the public that uh, have very little knowledge about. You know, we learn a lot about history, but there's a lot of history that we don't know. And as you can see, as of late, they're trying to even squash what we do. Oh, yeah. Governor DeSantos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord have mercy. <laughs> trying to eradicate. I'm sorry. No, I said he's 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 absolutely trying to eradicate anything that has anything remotely to do with African American history. This is cool. This is incredible. It's it's insane in 2023, my brother, and uh, we got to put a stop to yeah. it. If, you know, the kids and and the people who are hungry for knowledge. I mean, for you, I don't know what he thinks that there's not the internet. There's not other ways how to how to get the knowledge that you need. And I think that people are, are just predisposed to, to, for the hunger for knowledge, for, for what they don't know. So whatever he's doing is going to fail miserably because you cannot stop knowledge and history and trying to learn about yourself. And you, can, you can't keep people from learning about other people. That's the thing, you know, how, how are right. we going to become together and where we're supposed to be. How are we going to be united if you don't know anyone else other than yourself? That's ridiculous. Without question. It uh, harkens me back to that song, one of my favorite songs by Cameo, The Skin I'm In. And I find that rather apropos. Here we are in 2023. Right. <laughs> and okay. we're still going. We're still going through the same thing one of the things that i've always loved and i can say that loved about you you've always pushed the spiritual journey over everything you said you said i remember the last time i spoke with you teddy bear i can't make music if i'm not spiritually right i have to be connected right in order to give all of myself to what i'm doing what has that spiritual journey been like for Tommy Jenkins over the last seven years? Wow, that's very true, though, and uh, I'm glad you remember that. It's been, it's been really, really, uh, uh, in a lot of ways, heartbreaking, in a lot of ways, illuminating, and with the advent on my record, I have a song called uh, "It Can Happen Here." And I was living in California at the time, and it was one of the mass shootings happened. And, okay. and I wrote that song right then. My One of my uh, co-producers, uh, Lee Hurst, came up with a track that this snare drum sounded like gunshots. And 
it just sparked a whole thing in me to write this song and I wrote it down in one session. I wrote this this piece talking about mass shootings and how it affects not only not only the people who are directly affected by by uh, by death, but by the people who are who survive it, who survive, and then the families of those who are who are killed, and how it's been allowed to happen time after time after time. So this that I've always been connected to social, as you know, Teddy Bear, social issues, spiritual <laughs> issues, issues yes. that affect the human condition, you know, and uh, this album explores uh, Black Lives Matter, it explores the the, uh, the shootings of, of, of black men uh, by police officers uh, in the, uh, just killed in the street. I mean, George Floyd, the George Floyd murder uh, prompted me to write this particular song. And uh, so not only do I have those types of things, but I did want to explore that. But, you know, over the last seven years, I've been I've been really gathering information to come up with a with a piece of music that not only explores my R&B side, a little bit of the funky side, but also where I come from as an individual in the world. That's where, right. that's where I find my you know that's where i find my inspiration you know to to explore myself and what's going on around me i've lived long enough to know and not just write about and boogie and that you know what i mean i want to really say right. something when i'm when i'm when i'm uh, presenting a, a a piece to the world you know what i'm saying absolutely i think for me what what Really, what really bothers me and really disheartens me in today's society, and I'm going to put the emphasis on us as a people. I remember a time that we were more unified. I remember a time that we were more conscious about doing and loving, more importantly, loving one another. I can go back. I used to love when Sinbad would put these festivals together. Oh, yeah. In Aruba. And man, to see just a multiple multitude of different people, creeds. And, I mean, it was a beautiful thing. It was all love. It was about the music unifying everyone. Yeah. And yeah. you guys collectively killed it. You killed it. And now here Teddy we Bear, are in 2023. That was my favorite. <laughs> That when I look at it now on YouTube, uh, it just totally fills me with so much joy looking at that performance uh, and looking at the crowd and how everyone was reacting yeah. so, so joyously to the to the music and how the feedback, the back and forth was was wonderful. You know, you have those moments on stage where everything clicks there there when yeah. it happens, when it happens, it's it's uh, uh, it's such a blessing because it, with so much that can go wrong during the performance right <laughs> when everything is right when everything is right you know the no technical difficulties you know nobody you know it's no, it, it just worked and i think at that moment, that was one of our finest moments, man. We've had a few over the years. A cameo has had a few over the years, and uh, it, uh, it it's it's really something when it comes together like that. Man, just thinking about it now, it gives me uh, it actually gives me goosebumps, man. Because I remember I would sit up when they when they actually televised the show on um, HBO. Mm -hmm. And when they showed the entire thing, and I'm sitting there, man, and I mean, I said, man, and I wish I was there. And I mean, all you seen was just people from yeah. just the whole thing packed and everyone was just grooving. It was about the music. And now here we are in 2023. I don't see that anymore. I don't get that vibe anymore. A lot of the a lot of the music is is negative. It's nothing about 
coming together, looking, going past color, which is, you know, which like we're just going through the motions. Your new yeah. album, what does it demonstrate? What does it bring to the forefront to hopefully put us collectively back on track to understand that there's a bigger picture? Man, hold on one sec. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, that's no, no problem, brother. We here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm going over the the, the 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 music in my head, and what I could say about the record collectively is is that I have different songs that explore different aspects of the human condition, whether it's personal, whether it has something to do with you personally, whether it has something to do with uh, a woman, uh, a significant other that you may have hurt and trying to get back with, you know what I mean? Trying to, re <laughs> right. trying to, re trying to redeem yourself. You know what I mean? There's redemption. Right. There's right. forgiveness. You know, involved. Um, one of the songs that I had that sometimes we rarely. I know a lot of artists explore them their 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 themselves. You know, they I don't. I think as an artist, you can't be afraid to get to the dirty. You know what I mean? Within right. yourself, you have to be brave enough to say, you know. I did this. I'm ashamed because I hurt you. So I'm going to try to uh, uh, try to reconcile that with however right. means I can, whether it's through song, whether it's through phone call, whether it's through a letter, whether it's through something. But I think we all have to be honest with ourselves. So the title track, Soul Survivor, is that particular song that that speaks to the to to me you know yeah i made some mistakes but i'm a soul survivor you know lord have mercy that's that taboo word man transparency that we talked about last time right. it's, <laughs> right. it's man right. to be that vulnerable to be unafraid unapologetic to open right. oneself up to show our flaws because I know we as men we have a tendency to we want to micromanage our lives yes. the way we think we have one particular viewpoint and be able to open ourselves up to so many different other viewpoints is definitely a um, how should I say an experience <laughs> this yeah. is definitely an experience it's an experience man one of the things that I love about the songs that you were kind enough to send us Man, you working with my man, Charlie Singleton, man. That is a beautiful experience to see you two together Coll <laughs> collaborate, man. What was that like for you two to get back together and work on this project? Man, Charlie is so busy doing what he does. I mean, he, 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 is, he is a, this dude is amazing uh, uh, instrumentalist and uh songwriter and vocalist and everything so i had to call him up i don't know how many times i said man, <laughs> you gotta you gotta get this down bro you know i know you're doing your thing <laughs> so I, need your, I, I need your magic on this bad boy man so so he i'm telling you once he put it uh put that uh put his 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 stamp on that on a couple of tracks actually uh he it was it just transformed it to it took it to a whole nother level and i didn't have right. to i didn't have to you know sometimes you know when you're in the studio when we were in the studio we would kaiser do various tracks and say okay let's take one from column b one from column a one you know what i'm saying but or the whole thing rarely now i don't know how many tracks he did because you know he said he sent them to me but <laughs> the one that he that he did that that was there 
was perfecto. It it just from the from the beginning notes to the whole thing, it just spoke to the, the essence of what the track is about. Because it's got some rock elements, it's got funk elements, it's got R and B elements, and and Charlie really he's a rock dude at heart, man. I, I don't know. Right. You know. He's he's just a rock cat at heart, really. And that's what I love about you know him being uh, 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 gracious enough to put his his uh, his his uh, stuff on my songs, man, because it just works. It works perfectly. He's he's always man on every record. I, I say, yo, Singleton, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Got a minute, bro? <laughs> oh man, hey, you know the production was great, and I wanted to ask you, how did you manage to keep it raw, but also make it polished? Just kind of back and forth between digital and analog because you were able to do it in a phenomenal way, man, because we kind of get we, we put so much emphasis now on the digital age. But to me, when you have that raw essence of what it is, when you cut it with your teeth, it's definitely a beautiful thing. So how were you guys able to do that? Man, let me tell you, uh, my co-producer, uh, I have two and I was really blessed to have uh, uh, Sante Valls, who uh, created two wonderful songs. Actually, special one is one of his tracks uh, that he that he uh, came up with, and him and Lee uh, Hurst, who has been my longtime producer for for you know several, for a couple of albums. Uh, I think the thought going into it was to keep it keep it uh um you said analog and that's that's a good right. word you know that's a that's a good word to keep it we have some digital elements of course but to really keep it uh uh where it's not so shiny you know that's, right. that's <laughs> you know what i'm saying right <laughs> I, you know, I listened to a lot of rap uh, music, and um, you know, I went back and listened to uh, 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 um, oh gosh, uh, I listened to a lot of uh, um, oh my gosh, I can just you can Nipsey, see, bro. no yeah, Nipsey, okay. Uh, okay. yeah, Nipsey Hustle and. Uh, I went back and listened to a lot of old, old uh, rap music, and I liked the fact that it was no frills. It just went, it, it hit you in a certain kind of way that wasn't so uh, uh, digitally. This was before even digital was a thing. To to uh, now as such a, as such as it is now, you know. But um, that was our goal to make it as cool as you know less digital as possible really get to the meat of the songs uh, highlight the songwriting highlight the, the the instrumentation that that is there to talk about and tell the story of what what the song right. is, you know just tell the story what our question no question. I'm going to use this whole analog, you know, the old man get off my lawn type of, <laughs> type of deal. I'm going to go. I'm, 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 hey, I'm, I'm stuck in where I am, brother. I'm, I'm honest about it. I think it's wonderful now where artists have the accessibility to record and have their own studio in their home and they can use Fruity Loops and everything. Everything is in their disposal. And that's great. But damn it. I miss the times where instead of using a microwave, we actually had to use oven. We used to put that love, heart, and all the essence which you need. I don't care how many hours, how many days, how many months that you really had to grind in a studio to put something together. And it harkens me back to grandma's cookies. You know, when she made them in the oven, it took forever to get them done. But when they came out, they were perfect. It was made full of love and yeah. i'm seeing today man a lot of that is not made with love it's just like you stick in the microwave let's pull it out and it's done i'm just not feeling that but that's that's okay that's yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's that's okay 
Yeah, that's okay. Do you think that's all right? Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was getting ready to say, do you when you go back in the early stages of cameo, forget cameosis, what was the recording like as far as going in the studio and actually putting together music, comparing that then to where we are right now, as far as the whole recording and mastering of music? During that whole period, the 80s, was, I hope, and I'm glad you brought that up because one of the other projects that I'm involved in is a, a proposed film that my partner in LA, uh, you know, Nate Williams, uh, our, our company Pearl View, we're putting to, we've been okay. working on this film called Ismosis. I don't know if we talked about that the last time, because I know it's been a long in development. Man, you know how that is. Man, you talk about so many different things. I'm saying, okay, I'm sitting back and I'm waiting, man. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, you talk about that and you talk about how it was recording back then. It's, and I'm going to briefly touch on this, this, uh, this, this project, Ismosis. Okay. Uh, these, it's about a 70s group. Uh, it's a fictional 70s band. And okay. their rise, rise and fall and rise again during the 70s, the 80s, and the early 90s, just like regular funk. It's a funk band, right? So several years ago, I had these brothers, and these are hip-hop era brothers, right? They're 20 in their 20s. So I've been producing the music, so I have them in the studio. And <clears throat> the music was recorded in the studio. At uh, We actually used uh, a studio in LA. We recorded all the music. When, it's, when it was time to do the vocals, I had those brothers in the studio doing the vocals. And there were no, uh, no runs, none of that kind of stuff. Nobody did that kind of thing except Charlie Wilson. Right. He was the only one. And Stevie were the only guys that really did a lot of those kinds of runs, right? So I, I was in the studio and they did not realize and myself, I realized that it was a technique involved in singing like that. I had no idea. Teaching these guys who were in their 20s who had no idea how to do that. So in that way, I was bringing my, my, my education from the 80s, how we recorded in the studio. That's how I wanted right. to present this to them, to make it as, as close to the real thing as possible. So there's no, we're gonna do the hand claps all the way down like we did in the studio, you know, through the whole song. Right. <laughs> you, get, you, get, you get in the studio, you play, you play at the same time, everybody's in the room together, all the musicians, the drummer's behind the thing, guitar player, bass player, piano, keyboards, you know, of course you got your overdubs, of course, but the basic tracks right. are laid together, you know, so, that's how, that's the sensibility I brought to this record, to my solo record. And which is why you have that feel that you expressed earlier in this, in the, uh, right. in your conversation right. of the analogness of and it, digital. right? Yeah. So that was Absolutely. cool, man. That's, 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 that's the, that's the floor. That's the floor that we, that we made back then. And that's what right. I think a lot of times current music is missing that unless you came from that, then right. if, if, you, if you didn't come from that, then you don't know anything. You know what I mean? All you know is let's go in the studio. The, you know, uh, we got samples, we got records, we got a crate over here. We're going to do this and we're going to add some bass. We're going to add some keyboards. And I'm so happy that they did that early in the 90s, you know, when 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 uh, producers started using live musicians on top of right. samples that that made it more alive to me. You know what I mean? And, and, and also, I mean, you got to have skill to scratch. You got to have skills to to do that, to DJ and do that. So I would never be the old man on the lawn, as you say. I would, yeah. Never, yeah. I would never be that cat. You know what I mean? Because each era has their has their thing. You know, and there's there, right. there's a uh, there's uh, um, there's an intelligence and a creativity 
that can go into anything that you do if you're honest about it. If you're not trying to shortcut, if you're not just trying to do something just for the sake of money or just for the sake right. of oh, this, sounds, this sounds like that, so let me do that. No, do you, you know, and that's that's all we ask as artists and musicians and, and listeners, people who love music in general. You know, I don't think everybody wants to hear the same song on the radio 24 seven. You know what I mean? I think we no, really want to hear some diversity and some, some, some variety. I, I, I truly believe that. So, I, you know, it behooves artists and, and create creators to, to really seek out who they are as a, a, a creator, no matter what you do, you know, art, you know, whatever art it is to find your voice. Well, yeah. Express that because that is the honesty in which you do. So I don't care. Uh, like, you know, you, I mean, I could do, oh, this is why I do different things on my album. Because, you know, this is why I explore uh, 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 crime. I, you know, um, black on uh, police crime against, you know, black people. And I explore uh, the, 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 uh, the horribleness of mass shooting. You know, I explore that, but at the same time, I give hope, I give light, I give fun, I give joy, I give, you know, I do all different kinds of things. So when people buy the record, they're not just gonna hear one thing, they're gonna hear me. Right. Without <laughs> question, and that's, and that's important. I, for me, I think the thing that bothers me more than anything else is that there's very few people that are given the God gift ability, a gift, and I'm putting the emphasis on a gift from an artistic standpoint to be able, use, be able to use music as a platform to bridge the gap, to bring people together. And instead of honing those skills and doing it in a productive manner, they become yeah. stagnant. They become abusive to it. They're not using it in a way that's going to manifest. What's the old song by James? You're just talking loud and ain't saying nothing. And that's what I'm <laughs> this this is this is what I'm getting from a lot of this music. Today's music, where you have the industry, a lot of these labels that are force feeding a certain segment of our people and saying this is what it is. And I'm saying, no. Nah. It's more to it than that. You're giving me a piece of chicken, but where's the collard greens? Man, I'm telling, you, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling it's you, sad. It, it is, it is sad. And I think there's so much, uh, there's so much, like you said, that's a good word you used was abuse because there's yeah. so much abuse from the labels to, um, to these artists and to uh, a lot of these guys and, and, you know, artists period who are younger and, I mean, it, it's been that way for a millennium. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's yeah. just that's just the way it's been. So, but now, um, what's really good? You have to instead of being on the radio and you can hear everything on the radio that you liked, then mm -hmm. now you have to seek it out. Now you have to yeah, you have to really dig to find out. Okay. Where's the music that I can really yeah. listen to, you know? So yeah. there's a there's a few things, you know. Uh, there's a few things I don't really listen to the radio that much, man. You know what I mean? But um, and especially while I was doing my record in the beginning, I was listening to figure out what was going on. I always go to Sirius or someplace to uh, Pandora, Pandora or somewhere to find what what new music is happening. Where you know who's doing what? Where where's the new music coming from? Right. And, and uh, because I want to hear if there's anything new that's exciting to me, and I I have found a few really interesting things. They weren't R and B specifically, uh, unfortunately. They weren't uh, yeah. R and B, which is you know. I mean, I know I know there are a few are uh, young cats who are claiming to be the kings of R and Bs and all that kind of stuff. You know. <laughs> I'm not disparaging. I just don't see it. I don't. I yeah. don't. 
know where it's coming from, you know? I mean, where's the love? Where's the, I don't have to, don't please don't use the B word. Don't use the, you know, the A yeah. don't use, don't use none of those words if you're talking about women. You know what I mean? That doesn't, that, that's not, that's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you know? You, you know, you say that, but it goes back to something that we touched upon before. You said the one of the greatest ills in our society is having an ego. And once that ego takes control, you become lost and you have no self-worth of who you are. And I've seen a lot of that over the years where we collectively start out as brothers. We have one goal not just to be successful, but to bring something new, then all of a sudden you have this fraction telling you this and, hey, you're this, and you mm -hmm. don't need this and you don't need them. And all of a sudden, wait a minute. I thought we were brothers. I thought we were right. a family. Right. What happened? Right. <laughs> right. But what, what happened? It wasn't about the love. It was about doing something that was special, different. What happened to that? You I have think. been in this industry for a long time and you, you've seen it firsthand. And I find it rather apropos that your album is called Soul Survivor. But that epitomized Tommy Jenkins' journey in this music industry and in his life overall. Most definitely, brother. Most definitely. That was that was that was a conscious choice for sure. Lord have mercy, so survivor and for those who are tuning in late shame on you what the teddy bear does forgive you we're being joined by the legendary the one mr tommy jenkins of course his new album soul survivor and i gotta ask you man how did you manage i call him the phantom jesse johnson how did you manage to get him on this on this project because he's rarely seen and rarely even heard from you see him maybe once every blue moon so how were you able to put that together <laughs> yeah, Jesse is an enigma. You know what I'm saying? He's he's yeah. uh, he's he's definitely a, uh, a very very special person, a beautiful soul, and a, a great great friend. I've been knowing Jesse uh, for decades, and uh, and I all I had to do once I tracked him down, all I had to do was there say, uh, <laughs> "Yes, would you mind? Would you mind?" And he said, T, whatever you want, man, whatever, just send me the track. So I had to do the same thing with him as I did with Charlie. Cause you know, these dudes, you know, they, yeah. they're, they're not just sitting around, you know, they're doing things. So when right. they can fit you in, they fit you in. And I, and I'm a patient yeah. fellow. So I'm like, okay, uh, I, I, there wasn't really a rush on the album. I didn't have a deadline from a record label. You know what I'm saying? You got to get this out. So it was, it was, plus I was doing other things. The album wasn't finished. I still had to write. I still had to record some things. So it was, it wasn't really a rush, but uh, Jesse was gracious and wonderful as he always is. And I, <laughs> he loved the song and that's a plus. So, um, my daughters and uh, and uh, know him very, very, very well, and uh, so we actually they actually grew up with him, you know, okay, uh, in LA. So he's he's like family. So uh, um, I was surprised when he came back with a West Montgomery type feel, and I'm like, hey, Jim. <laughs> I said, I like that, brother. Uh, oh I, man! I, you know, because he's such a, you know, he can he can wear like Singleton can. So I'm like, okay, right. you, know, you you got you got the feel, you got the feel on that. Now that that surprised me, but it was a wonderful surprise and a in a in a departure in a in a in a, a different kind of way because I have Singleton on there doing his thing, and I got Jesse with the with the contract. You know, mm -hmm. that was right. that was wonderful. Yeah. Jesse, it was one of like, like a bowl of jambalaya, man. Each person is bringing something different absolutely. to the table, which is a different experience. I want to touch upon your writing and I know how important your writing is to you. But for the people that are watching live, I want you to express to them how therapeutic writing is for you. Very much so. It's very, very. Uh, I've been writing since I'm since I'm a kid, you know, in Jersey, growing up, 
uh, and I've always written plays, uh, you know, sixth grade, different things. I've, I'm, I'm, I've always been a writer. And I found that later on in life that I had, I guess it was a gift to, to, uh, of, of sorts that I liked editing. <laughs> right. With Cameo, they would always come to me <laughs> and say, hey, is this right? Can we say this? Or how's this in the sentence, you know, while we were writing, putting the songs together. So that's always been my kind of role. Um, and so uh, in writing, it, it, it it's an expression that I feel complements my vocal and my 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 singing in right. a way that's kind of special, you know. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, writing the three books that I wrote, actually uh, crime novels. You know, I'm a fiction fiction. Uh, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a crime novel fan, you know. So um, let me see. Uh, Walter Mosley is my favorite writer. And I really try to, not try to, but he's very, he's, he's one of my biggest inspirations. Uh, so, you know, my three books are based on in, in a, a detective and stuff like that. But as far as songwriting, uh, this particular album is more introspective than the others have been. Uh, not to okay. say that I haven't not to say that I have not touched on certain aspects of my character, my personality, uh, what's going on inside my heart, uh, in in <clears throat> excuse me, in others other on other songs. But in this album particularly, it was it was very introspective. I I, I really took time to uh, to tell the truth, you know, right. in certain, and, you know, I, I, I actually told the truth in the, the biggest part. And I think I mentioned this earlier was being honest with myself first. Right. <clears throat> and, and I think that brings out the best in your writing. If you're honest and if, and if you're unafraid to go there and, and to put it out. Cause I know a lot of, a lot of artists are like that. Um, I understand Taylor Swift is one of those types of artists who, you know, expresses herself very well uh, as far as what she's going through, uh, you know, stuff like that, which is, which is, which is, uh, uh, it's brave, you know, uh, to, to take something, put it on paper first, and then get behind the, the microphone and express it. The next thing you know, the world is hearing it and then you go oh gosh i don't know if i should have said that <laughs> you know i don't know if i i don't know but it's too late you already did yeah. it, you know so once you yeah. once you once you do that then the 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 insecurities and the fear of what people are going to think or what they're going to say is immaterial at that point because you can't yeah. it's it's already done so i so you go into the process without fear you go into the process already knowing that this is what you're putting down you you you're finding and look like you 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 referenced it i've been in the business a long time and yeah. if there was ever a time that i could do this it's now because yeah you know what I got to lose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that we as men and we've always had the should I say I'll say issue again. Go back to the level of transparency and be we're actually our own greatest critic. And I'm going yeah. to ask you from being a father. When you show that level of transparency and may say things that your children or your daughters never even knew about their father, 
Did it give you time to kind of think about, hey, do I really want to put this out here? Because I know it may be some things that my daughters don't even know about me, but I'm going to be brave enough to say, you know what? Like you said, it, I'm, it's too late in the game now. So let me just go in and just put it out there and I'm going to deal with the situation. Did you ever have that kind of thought process during the time? Uh, not really. No. Um, my daughters are, uh, you know, they're they're uh, they're old enough now to know uh, they've seen me come up. They've come up with me in the business and uh, my son as well. And so they know me. They know that I'm not going to say anything that's going to uh, hurt them or put them in a situation or a position that they'll have to defend in any kind of in any right. kind of way, you know. So no, they they they're cool. I I didn't have that worry uh, at all, really. I know that you know one particular song uh, will 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 probably. Uh, one song will probably um, be interesting to hear for certain people uh, that, you know, from my past. And, you know, that's cool. You know what I mean? Like I said, you know, you're vulnerable. You, 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 it's time sometimes to be expressive and express yourself unafraid. And that's right. You know, you know. Right. Well, let me give all the family out there the pertinent information. First and foremost, the new single, of course, special one, is available on all social media outlets. But you can also be sure to go to Tommy's official website. That's at TommyJenkinsMusic.com. Also at TommyJenkins.BandCamp.com. But be sure to get the new single. It is available. Now, I got to ask you. When can we expect the entire album? I mean, you've given us, you've given us a, a dessert, a slice of cheesecake, so to speak. When can we expect the full menu, brother? I'm waiting. I finally today got the the final mix on the last song. Lee sent it to me today. Uh, we've been okay. We've been, you know, making sure that everything is right uh, from his perspective from our perspective and from Sante's perspective. And I've, I've, I've got two of the best producers uh, to co-produce with me on this record. I couldn't have asked for a better uh, situation for this particular project. Uh, everybody, they, they all came with something very, very special musically, little, little things that happen in the music, quirky stuff, you know, things that really, <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, that really spoke to me as far as music. And it was so easy, Teddy Bear, to write to. That's the thing. Right. It's very easy to, to write and to come up with interesting melodies and lyrics. And uh, uh, it, was, it was just, this project was fun. And I got to give all the credit to those cats, man, because they... They they were on it, man. They were on it. And Sante, I had just met him through Lee, as a matter of fact. And okay. that that brother, I don't know what what he thinks about, but, <laughs> but, but you know, you know, you know. I wanted to give a little twist, a little twist to the R and B thing. You know what I mean? This time, a little a little twist. I've always had my own vibe as far as my solo stuff is concerned. You know, right. I always had my own thing. Um, and of course, being uh, with the pedigree that I have with the group, I had with the group, um, that naturally comes out. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't, being such an integral part, you can't, that's a natural thing, you know, to, to, right. to out. So people are going to hear that, of course, when they see the record. But as to your question, I'm hoping to get this thing out. What is this, March? Yeah. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it mastered uh, this month, hopefully by the end of April. Okay, it'll be, okay. It'll be in the stores. I even talked about vinyl. 
Lord have mercy. My cup runneth over. There you go. <laughs> I, saw where vinyl, I, saw, I saw where vinyl sales were outpacing, you know, were really yeah. moving up, man. And, I, and you they know, come back. that's another. That's a new come back. <laughs> that's, another piece of this. that's another piece of the whole pie. You know what I mean? Right. To 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 have at least some 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 uh, some special copies for vinyl, uh, and uh, that's that's one of the goals that I'm that I definitely want to make. So after it's mastered, and you know, I get the you know, I want to do a video, of course, a couple of videos. So all of that will happen, uh, you know, getting all that together. It should be available uh, April, May, you know, uh, I'm trying to get it out as quick as possible. I may release another single before then, uh, uh, who knows? I'm trying to figure out which one it is. If anybody's listening or watching this on Facebook or wherever you're watching it, maybe uh, if you go, Hey, I may just put some things up. Uh, just please do, man. There's Jeez, a, a lot of people tuning in. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are tuning. Matter of fact, a uh, uh, Miss Tara Powell. She just said vinyl. Yes. Ah, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tara, cool, man. She, she just cool. said vinyl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear her saying that. Wait, we, yeah, we, yeah. we, we. I'm with you, Tara. I'm definitely. With you, oh, yeah. Teddy Bear's been longing for the vinyl for a long time, but yeah, the vinyl sales are going through the roof now. People are yeah, going well, back yeah, to that yeah, original yeah. sound. That's something They're that going. I'm very seriously contemplating, man. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I hope so. Uh, all I ask, brother, when the vinyl comes out, I will get it. I need a. I need autograph, man. I need. I need. I need autograph. That ain't no thing. I need, I need oh, a that's signature. Weird. That's weird. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something and I didn't get an opportunity to ask you the last time. <laughs> Why is it so challenging when you have a successful, ultra successful group where you have different individuals who enjoy different things and want to be <laughs> able to express your own musical interests? Why is it that each member of that group cannot are not able just to simply go out and say, hey, look, we have our own interests. We're going to do our own thing. But at the same time, the mothership, the hub is right here. So whenever we want to come back, because we know at the end of the day, this is where our bread and butter is. This is where we've established our legacy. Why is that so difficult for groups today to sit up and be able to do that? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a good question, Teddy Bear. That's a good question, man. Uh, when you have a group and you have strong individuals on their own, you have talented individuals on their own, there should be no problem. There should be no question that I think uh, the reason why a group is formed in the first place is because they each bring something unique and individual to the party. Right. So that that's why the group is formed, and that what's that is what makes a successful group. The Rolling Stones, the Beatles, you know, the uh, you know any group you can name, Red Hot Chili Peppers. They all have different different cats, but. <clears throat> They sometimes they go out to do their own thing, but the Red Hot Chili Peppers are still there. Rolling Stones, same thing, you know, Paul McCartney, you know, whatever, you know, that is that is like you said, the mothership. So there, that only yeah. makes it stronger. I, I don't know why that happens. Could be ego, could be jealousy, could be a lot of reasons why groups don't. Uh, be together like that and realize that <clears throat> even though you have this you have individuals but the individuals make up the whole and the whole could make it, I mean it, you know I mean that's that's like you said that's what the bread and butter is absolutely so, <clears throat> that could be absolutely that should never be messed with 
You know what I mean? That that should be the focus. And also to be able to go, because that situation, when you have individuals, they go out and they and they come back and bring even more experience from from what they've done to the group, to the to right. the whole. To make that to make the group even more expansive and expressive in their creativity and everything that happens. So right. the only things I can the, the the only things I can say why it doesn't work are all negative things. It's nothing positive. I'm trying it's to be great. cool because I'm, I'm trying. I know I'm you trying are. to be cool, and I'm trying to bite my tongue. It's really. I know. <laughs> I, man, I'm Rick, but you know what? I'm not gonna do it. I've never been that type of person to sit up here and hold back and and bite my tongue. I'm gonna say what I have to say, and I know it's gonna be a lot of cameo fans out there are not gonna be happy about what I'm about to say. I'm 58 years old, so I can say this. I've been a cameo fan going all the way back to cameosis, so I can speak on this. Okay, all the talented individuals that were in that group and I'm speaking of one right now from 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 Tommy from Nathan to Charlie all these talented individuals there's absolutely no reason why that as talented as each individual is can not be able to go out do what they want to do touch different sectors of the world and bring that back in to the mothership without an ego being involved because at the end of the day when cameosis were started out the UK market was nothing but a pipe dream. And look where we are now. Look where we are now. You have groups, like you said, the Rolling Stones. Mick is what, 70 some odd years old and they're still selling out stadiums. They're selling out stadiums. <clears throat> I go with Flea from the Red Hot Chili Pepper. I've seen Flea go out in his own and play with different other bands. Mm -hmm. And yeah. still came back home. <laughs> it's, it's nothing. And I'm just saying between you, Nathan, Charlie and the other members said, why weren't they able to do that? And it always comes back to one particular entity. And I'm not going to touch that. But at the end of the day, to me, it's 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 a waste. And I feel I feel bad because there are a lot of great bands out there that that should be able to do that and missing out. <laughs> I got to do it. Hey, Tommy, uh, Nate C. Williams, who just told me, he said, Teddy Bear, hey, and then uh, Carolyn Blackman said, preach, Teddy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey, man. Hey, hey, Thank you, family. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it just, it, it just, Carol special. <laughs> special. <laughs> it just, it, 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 it bothers me, man, because people mm -hmm. don't really truly realize how talented you are as a songwriter as a producer as an author to me personally i think you should delve deeper as far as the writing is concerned and put something together why not put a small movie together man you have netflix to be all these different entities where your book as far as like crime novels would it yeah. excel yeah, on stuff like works. that the platform that's is there works. <clears throat> it's in the works. works. Oh yeah. That's oh, works. I love it. <laughs> that's in the works, bro. Um, you know, especially my latest, my latest one, uh, finding, finding Carrie. My latest one uh, is uh, I'm 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 definitely looking at ways to uh, get a screen a script uh, and a screenwriter involved in that because I think that that would make a wonderful, wonderful uh, series or film something very special for Netflix. But, you know, going back to your earlier point, um, maybe the universe will smile down upon us and see that we've got uh, something that is unfinished and that, you know, Cameo has, Cameo has unfinished business and that, you know, I think the, the, the audience and the, the people who have been supporting Cameo for, for uh, forever, would love to see uh, something uh, before we all uh, call it call it a call it a day, you know. So Man. I'm just gonna put it out there. I hope so. This message is directed 
is strictly directed to my brother, and I'll call him my brother because I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. Brother Blackman, take off that car pace, sit down, get your brothers together, and do something and make something magical happen. You have the UK market, you have Australia, you have Japan, you have Germany. They want funk. They need it. They desire funk. Artists go out there, perform all the time, and the shows are all sold out. They have album covers, liner notes. They love, they adore our music. The amount of, the amount of monetary gain that could be made from doing that would be incredible. It would be incredible, man. I'm just, I'm speaking my truth. I'm just going by what I've seen over the past 20 years. I've seen it. Yeah. So why not get in and make, get in and make, now you say, we done stepped away. We've all developed our artistry. We've grown as quote unquote, as men, we've maturity wise. Let's put the egos aside. Let's go back to when it was us as brothers. It wasn't about the ego. It wasn't about the money. It was about us making great music. It was about us getting in the studio. Excuse my French or your Francois people. It was about us getting in the studio and kicking ass, getting on stage and blowing people away. That's what cameosis was about. That's what cameo was about. Where is it at, Larry? I'm asking that question. I'm posing that question directly to you. Where is that at? I want it back. A lot of fans, loyal fans and supporters are yearning for it. But you can make it happen. I've spoken my truth, man. I, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just, man, I'm just, I know people, people say, preach teddy bear. Yes. I'm like, I'm just a, hey, I'm, I'm, spe I'm, I'm speaking about, I, I hate I to see you, waste. No, but that's why I love you, brother, because, you know, you are, you, you are about the truth. That's why I love speaking to you uh, and, and, and doing things with you, man, because, you know, it's all love and it's and it's it's about the real. Come on, man. It is. You, you, you have to be. I just I just and I'm like I said, we've been sitting here. I know, Perk, like I said, the last time I spoke with you, I said, man, whenever you come out with anything, let me know. We will definitely have you on the show. I don't care. In the Program director had told me, you know, uh, Tommy has some music. I said, does. I said, get him on the show immediately. We have to promote this. We have to let people know that he got some music out. And I said, I know. So he also knows, also know that he's a writer. We have to promote this because I don't see any other stations doing anything like that because they're so, it's everything I see today, Tommy, is so contrived and so artificial it's not real. It's not based upon music anymore. It's not based upon conversation about the artist. It's not that. No, everything is about teams, TMZ, who this person slept with. Where did they go? What did they have to make? Wait a minute. So I said myself, I'm the modern day Lee Bailey. Yeah, I said it. I'm the modern day <laughs> Lee Bailey. I'm bringing it back the way it used to be. I'm him, right. not him. I'm him. I'm him. So I'm, a, I'm bringing it back the way it used to be. And family, be sure again to get the new hit single, Special One, featuring the one and only Jesse Johnson that is available as we speak on all social media platforms. But be sure to get all the latest updates. Let your fingers do the walking. Stop by Tommy's official website. That's at TommyJenkinsMusic.com. Also, TommyJenkins.BandCamp. <laughs> Dot com and also follow him and support him on social media on Instagram. That's at Instagram.com forward slash that's Rawway Kid. That's R A H W A Y Kid. Lord have mercy. Mm, it's a beautiful thing, brother. I love you. <laughs> oh man, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us. But when vinyl comes out, I definitely want to autograph copy and I also want to autograph copy of that book, man. No, I have to okay, have that. I, gotta, man, I, I, I gotta get some more, man. I sold out, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some more up in here, man. 
And, uh, and of course, um, Teddy Bear, man, if, of course, anytime you call, I'm there. Anytime, man. It's always a distinct pleasure to talk to you because you, you bring the real, brother. And, I, and the, you can't do anything but appreciate it. Can't Man, do I'm, I'm do, I do it out of love. I, I do it out of love. I mean, it's just, I just, it just, a lot of things irritate me. And a lot of times I've been told, you know, when you're saying too much, you shouldn't say this. I'm like, look, number one, real people don't want to be lied to. Real people want the truth, especially when it comes to music, as you stated earlier. Man, I got to sit up here and I got to search to find the music that I like. And at a time, in, time in, a, in a particular time, it wasn't like that. Right. That the music that we love was available and accessible to everybody. Now you got to sit right. up here, uh, Lexus do this. So I'm looking for this. I'm like, come on. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to do that no more. I don't want the microwave popcorn, brother. I want the popcorn you took out the bag and had to put it in a skillet and watch it. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> I want to thank everyone for tuning in and tuning out all the negativity. Thank you for supporting us. And I want to get, I want to send out a very special thank you to Mr. Tommy Jenkins, brother. Thank you so much. Much oh. continued success with whatever you need, please. Reach man, out. You, I got thank you, man. You, thank you, man. And I'll be in touch with you for sure. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for <laughs> My pleasure, brother. The, le <laughs> the legendary Mr. Tommy Jenkins, of course, here on Night Tracks Radio. I want to thank everyone again for tuning in. Yeah, the teddy bear had to just had to express himself a little bit. I want to thank everybody from Nate C. Williams, of course, Miss Carol Blackman, Yvette Blackman, <laughs> Juliet Hackman. I promise she's I oh thank uh my pleasure, my pleasure. We're here to bring the real. I've never sit up and said something like that, but I have. I'll say it. I am the I am the modern day of what I claim to be. I'm not him. I'm him. Yes, Lord. I want to thank Tommy for tuning in and joining us and blessing us this evening again. Be on the lookout for the new album, Soul Survivor. It'll be out real soon. And once it is, I'll tell you what, this is what I'll do. Once the album does come out, I'll buy a certain amount of copies and I'll actually give them away as prizes on our next show when it's ready. And I'm talking about vinyl. I will definitely do that. But also, in the meantime, be sure to buy the new single, of course. The hit single, special one, featuring Jesse Johnson of the time. Websites Tommy Jenkins at dot bandcamp dot com. Also at Tommy Jenkins Music dot com. It's been a beautiful experience. <laughs> All right, Juliet, I promise. <laughs> I promise you, my queen. As soon as the vinyl does come out, I'll get a multitude of them, and you in. We'll make it happen. We'll make sure that you get your little vinyl because I definitely want one. But I want to thank you because without you, there's no night tracks. And it's definitely no Mr. Rated R. <laughs> Mr. Rated R extraordinaire. The one and only, the cuddly teddy bear. As in always, keep it so full here on Night Tracks Radio.